Hey everyone, welcome back to another video for Electron Retracts. Whether you're looking at a new retract set for your model, have just bought your first Electron Retracts combo, or are an existing user, this video is for you. Make sure to watch this video before installing your kit to make sure that you avoid these common mistakes. They're all very simple to make and they're also very easy to avoid. So let's get straight into it. Roll the intro. Mistake number one, never, ever, ever connect a battery directly to a retract unit. Always use a controller. Why? Very simple. This is just a motor and a gearbox. A very clever version, but it's still a motor and a gearbox. Therefore, if you connect power to it directly, power is always going to continue surging through, regardless of whether it's reached its endpoints or not. The controllers detect how much current is being sucked up by the retract and if that's above a certain limit it knows it's reached its end or has come against an obstacle in its path. Therefore it stops supplying power to the motor and avoids the motor from being damaged. If you connect your LiPo directly to your retract you don't know whether it's going to be trying to open or close because of the polarity and you've got a 50% chance of getting it wrong and even if you get it right if it comes against an obstacle or you disconnect it too late after it's reached its end point you're already damaging the motor. Now 90% of any problems that clients have is normally due to this. Now because of this Electron Retracts have brought out their manual controller. This allows you to plug in a battery pretty much directly into your retract and operate it with two simple buttons. Same thing as connecting the battery but safely. Okay, so don't do it. Lesson number one, never connect a battery directly to a retract. Number two. Okay, number two is even more obvious than number one, but it's still overly easy to make the mistake, so let's go over it. Check the polarity of your batteries. Now, if you buy a wire with a connector on it and simply solder them together, it's very obvious that red goes with red and black goes with black. However, if you're soldering just the connector, it's all too easy to solder the wires in the wrong way round. We've all done it at some point and the results can be catastrophic. So just make sure that before connecting it anywhere for the first time that the polarity as indicated on the controller itself matches with the battery. Otherwise the damage to the controller will be irreversible. That said, the actual retracts themselves can be connected in either direction without causing any kind of damage to the retract. However, you need to be aware that if you do reverse one of the retracts, it will be retracting when the others are extending. Or if you happen to reverse all of them, when the controller believes that they are up, they will be down and vice versa. The problem with that is that as and when you have your steering servo connected through the controller then that steering servo is only going to work when the gear is up and it's going to be locked when the gear is down so just bear that in mind equally the latest versions of the retracts are actually reversible as indicated on the gear itself what that means is if you need the gear instead of coming down this way to go the other way, we can simply remove the trunnion, turn it round, and it will work in reverse. Now for that to work in the correct direction, we will actually need to reverse the polarity going into the controller. 
So, as I say, it doesn't cause any damage, just make sure that it's correct for your particular setup. As far as the brakes are concerned, the brakes, again, doesn't matter which way round you connect them, positive or negative. Despite that, the controller still indicates which side should be positive and negative, so just stick to it. Number three, don't join wires. Now, sure, it may be tempting that you have a Futaba connector using two of the three points and another Futaba connector using two of the three connecting points to try and put them into a single Futaba connector and join the negatives together or to join the positives together. However, you should never ever do this because each one of the two systems runs completely independent from each other and if you join any of the wires with each other, it will short circuit the whole system, destroying most likely the controller and the retracts, possibly even the brakes. So the wires are provided as separate independent connections for a reason, leave it that way. To avoid having to connect two separate connectors, feel free to use the multi-connectors which are available from a number of different brands such as the typical multiplex connector which has six pins inside of it. Be aware however that each one of those connections should be independent from each other. Make sure that there are six wires coming in, six wires coming out and none of them share a common pin. Now we say this because we've unfortunately discovered that the MCOTEC version which is for four servos and has 12 wires actually only has six pins. That means that all the positives and all the negatives are joined through a single connection, through a single pin. So as soon as we connect that up to our model and provide power to it, we're going to blow the whole thing up. That's going to create a short circuit inside the pre-prepared, pre-manufactured multi-connector. So please be aware and make sure that each one of those connections is independent from each other. Number four, mount your retracts on a firm, flat surface. Now again, it seems really obvious, right? I mean, it's got flat mounting lugs, it's going to fit flat onto the support. Yes, however, if the wood that it's being mounted on seems to give way a little bit when tightening those bolts, or if there is any kind of difference between the two heights on either side, beware that as soon as you start tightening that up, you may be slightly deforming the actual mechanism itself. Now sure, this is made from aviation grade aluminium. It's a really tough, strong, resistant alloy. However, as soon as you get four bolts on it and really start cranking down on them, you'll probably still be able to twist it out of shape if your mounting plate isn't perfectly level. Now, because of the really minute tolerances that are required for these retracts. Any kind of distortion that we twist into this is going to cause a problem. It's mean going to avoid it having a nice smooth operation. It could even mean that it gets stuck halfway or before reaching its end point. Now it's very important that it always reaches either end point so that it can correctly absorb that landing. If it isn't fully extended when landing, rather than receiving all the force on the designated points, it's going to absorb it in the wrong places, causing damage to the retracts. So it's again a very simple one, but just make sure that your mounting surface is completely flat and that it's not giving way when you start cranking down on those bolts.
Number five, check for free movement. Now we touched on this on the previous point, saying how important it is that the gear can extend and retract fully. Now, these have been designed to absorb the impact of landing time and time and time and time again when in the fully extended position. If it isn't in the fully extended position, then all the wrong components are going to be absorbing that impact. And that's going to cause damage to the retract very, very quickly. That's obvious. However, it may be less obvious that it's just important that it can retract fully as well. The reason here is that if it comes against an obstacle whilst retracting, then that obstacle has obviously created sufficient pressure to prevent the motor from going any further. The controller has cut it off due to it reaching its maximum uh, current consumption and the wheel has got stuck in that final position. The key word here being stuck. The wheel at the end of the day has got stuck against something in a position and the retract then has to be able to force it out again. Now it may or may not be able to do that, depending on how much pressure and the angle and so on when jamming it in there. Now a very common example of this would be if you have a relatively thin wing where the retract is mounted and the, the wheel goes down into the wing, if the wheel actually ends up touching the, uh, the wing on the inside, what would basically be the top skin of the wing, then it may seem like it's actually reached its full retraction, but actually hasn't. And in doing so, the wheel has kind of got stuck against the top skin of the wing and may or may not be able to come out again. So just check, make sure that you can get a sheet of paper underneath freely and uh, that the wheel isn't touching the wing at any point in that movement and you'll be golden. Number six, and the last one for now, not so much a warning, just a little bit of helpful information. Which voltage goes where? Don't worry about the idea of a big battery going into your controller frying any servos because the extra battery is only ever going to power the retracts and the brakes. So no matter what voltage that battery is, be it 2S or 3S, depending on which retracts you have, that voltage is only going to go to the retracts and to the brakes. Any voltage required Additionally to that, such as for your steering servo or for your gear doors, is going to come from the power that the controller receives from the receiver or power box. Therefore, if the rest of your model is running on 5.9 volts, 7.4 or even 8.4, and that's the power that you are providing the controller with, that is the power that the controller is then going to pass on to those servos or gear doors. And there you have it, six great points to look out for when setting up your new model with Electron Retracks. We hope you found this video useful. Subscribe to the channel for more great videos. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Drop us a like and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.